guys and welcome back to another All Heart video. In today's video, I wanted to show you how to set up shelf activities for more than one child. Now, I know that in the past I have shown you how to set up activities for just your toddler and in a recent video I showed you how to set up activities for older children ages four and up. But how do you set up activities if you have more than one child, perhaps you have limited space and also budget is concerned? So those are the topics that we are going to be covering in today's video. I hope that you enjoy it. And with that, let's go ahead and get started on this video. Now, in preparation for your shelf activities, you do want to try and consider the different categories in Montessori that you would want to incorporate on these shelves. So the first one would be activities for developing their hand and eye coordination, also arts and crafts, practical life, language, and movement and music. So those are the five categories. Um, if you guys are interested in more information about all of those categories and how to set up each one, I do have a video on that and I will link it down in the description below. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to have every single one of those types of activities on your shelf. You can always rotate activities in later. Um, always keep in mind the developmental stage of your child and you can introduce activities as they continue to develop. So in no way, shape or form is it required of you to have all of these types of activities out all at once. And I will go ahead and show you how I have set up these categories on these shelves. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off with placement. On the very bottom of your shelf, and it really doesn't matter how many levels your shelf has, I would suggest that if you have more than one child to try and get a shelf that's got more than one levels. Two or three shelves is your best bet in setting up activities for more than one child. So just keep that in mind when you are shopping around for furniture for your play space or your home. Now at the very bottom of the shelf, that is where you want to set up activities for your youngest. And that is only because it is more easily accessible to them. If you are putting activities for them on the top shelf, there is no way for them to be able to reach it. They will most likely try and lift an activity and hurt themselves or the activity can fall to the floor and it'll create a mess and they will become discouraged. So all of the activities for your younger children, you want to set up on the bottom of the shelf. Secondly, make sure that you are placing their particular activities into trays or baskets. And keep in mind that you want to make sure that the baskets are not super thick. So make sure that even from a distance, they are able to see the activities that are inside. Um, the trays and baskets do not have to have handles. And let me show you an example. So like this one has the grip handle on the side. It's not required of you to get trays with the little handlebars on the side. It is easier for them to be able to grasp, however, but it is absolutely not required. And you can use any tray. You could even use the lids of like shoe boxes or other box lids, and that will work perfectly fine. Really, the only thing that you wanna do is be able to separate the activities and include everything that you would need for one activity on that tray or basket. The third thing, you want to make sure that you are setting up their activities from easiest to hardest. And basically all of the activities towards the left of the shelf are going to be the easier activities. And then as you gradually move along over towards the right side, then the activities will progressively get a little bit more difficult. So those are just a few things that you wanna keep in mind before you start setting up all of your shelf activities. Now, Let's start looking at the types of activities that you may want to introduce to your children. And let's start off with your toddler first. So in no particular order, let's start off with the very first category and that is language. So let me show you how I have set up the language activities for my daughter. And then I will show you how I have set up the language activities for my son. 
So as you can see here, I have set up a puzzle with the alphabet on the bottom shelf for my daughter. It's on the bottom shelf, it is easily accessible. Because the puzzle is already on a thick base, there is no need for me to uh, place this on a separate tray. I can just place the entire puzzle as it is. She is able to remove all of the pieces on her own and she is able to place all of the pieces back on top of the puzzle. So that is the first language activity here. Now, another thing that you can do to inspire language is also include some books. So even if you don't have a shelf or you don't have space for a shelf up on a wall or you definitely don't have space for a large bookshelf, just being able to prop a few books on a shelf, even if it's just two or three, that is more than perfect for them to be able to explore the world of language through books like these. Now, because my son is a little bit older, he's five years old, I decided to dedicate the entire top portion of this shelf to his language activities. And this doesn't mean that you have to dedicate an entire top area of your shelf just to one uh, category. This is just something that I did because it's something that he's incredibly interested in. And I am pairing all of these activities into one large category. Um, you can most definitely separate it into perhaps two activities on top or three. Just make sure that again, you separate them into baskets or trays, and that way they know that one particular tray or one particular basket is set up for that one activity, if that makes sense. So as you can see on the top shelf, I have put all of his activities at the very top. And starting from left to right, the first activity is all of his grammar symbols. So I have included a little picture frame that has all of the definitions of all of the little grammar symbols that he's going to come into contact with. I also have some of his little grammar symbols set out, especially the ones that we are currently working on. And I also have some worksheets out so that he is able to reinforce all of the grammar symbols. He's able to identify all of the different parts of speech through um, some of the paintings that you can see on here and also through some of the sentence structures that I have back here. Now, moving further along on this little basket, I have also included all of the definitions to all of the little grammar symbols so that he can identify all of them through their definitions. And the final activity at the top of his shelf is his little cursive handwriting book so that he's able to practice all of his cursive writing and also his little sand tray. I placed the sand tray at the very top because I don't want my toddler getting into it because that would be a very, very big mess, especially because she doesn't know how to utilize that type of material just yet. So that is why I decided to place that at the very top and notice that I included the cursive writing book and the sand tray into one large tray. That way he can remove the entire activity and practice it completely using both things. So now let's move on to the second category and that would be um, activities that would help develop their hand and eye coordination. I have set up the majority of them on the second shelf and that is because it is something that can be accessed by both my daughter and my son and I do have activities ranging from easiest to a little bit more difficult. So let me go ahead and show you that row. So as you can see on the second shelf, I have set up these little posting pegs for my daughter in order for her to be able to learn her numbers. And it, this is a very good activity for hand and eye coordination because she is having to pick up each individual peg and she has to fit it into the individual slot that corresponds to that specific number. So this is something that my daughter can use. This is also something that my son can use as well. The second activity I have presented in a basket, and these are another good um, sort of activity for developing their hand and eye coordination. And it is just placing the little peg through the little numbered slot and then dragging the little peg all the way down. This is a very simple threading activity and just for the activity itself, just that repetitive motion of being able to place the little numbered peg through the little wooden dowel and 
pulling it all the way through. This is the perfect activity for my toddler. Now, the way that this becomes a little bit more challenging is that each of the little round pegs has a number from one through 20. So as she continues to learn and progress and identify all of her numbers, then she'll be able to place all of the pegs in a row from smallest number to largest number. So that is why the activity is in the middle of the shelf because my son can also utilize this activity on his own. Now, as we move further along, I have set up activities for my son in the sense of different locks. And these are locks that I custom chose for him because a lot of the lock activities that are um, already assembled and they sell as like a set, those activities were just too simple for my son and they only stressed one movement, which was placing the key in the lock, turning it, and then the lock unlocks. Um, that was way too simple for my son and I wanted to give him things that were going to be a bit more challenging, which is why I decided to purchase different types of locks that would require different sorts of skills and different sorts of hand and eye coordination and five motor skills in order for him to perfect all of those movements. So I have placed that activity here and it is just on a separate tray for him. Moving along, you'll see that I also have this little tray with all of his little tools and it's got uh, different types of screws that he would have to use different types of tools for and he's able to identify which one to use. And it's also going to help with his hand and eye coordination, his fine motor skills, and also going to help him strengthen his hand, wrist, and um, fingers and this is the perfect activity um, just before you start introducing writing because he they are going to need a lot of strength and in movement in their hands in order to be able to hold their pencil so again this is an activity that is going to help him progress and all of the skills that are necessary in order for him to be able to write efficiently and the very last one is something specifically for my daughter so this is perfect for their hand and eye coordination and again, it's going to help strengthen her little hand and it's going to help with that rotation on her hand. So that ro rotating movement as well. So these are all activities that help with their hand and eye coordination and I have displayed them separately, either on individual trays or in baskets. And they are on the second shelf because they are activities that both my son and my daughter are able to utilize. Now let's move on to the category of music. Now I have set up a very small shelf right next to this larger one and it's got all of the music activities for them. Now as far as a musical instruments, these are activities that both my son and daughter are able to utilize. So on the first shelf I was able to place a small basket and it holds all of their little uh, different musical instruments. So things like there are drumsticks, there are maracas, a little tambourine, um, like little shakers. So um, just different activities that they're able to use in relation to musical instruments. And it's something that is easily accessible and I placed it in a basket. So it's on the very bottom of the shelf and both my son and my daughter are able to take the basket out, use the materials and then place it back. On the second shelf, I have a musical puzzle and it is the perfect way, again, to not only introduce language, but also introduce the different musical instruments in a nice, easy, compact way. So I was able to place this on the second shelf. It's an activity that my son and daughter are both able to utilize, so I just placed that on the second shelf. At the very top, I have more of the larger instruments, but again, it's at a level where my daughter and my son is uh, both able to pick them up and use them when they want to. And it's just a, a small drum, and right next to that, I have their little accordion. So that is just the way that I have set up their little music activities. Um, again, you can display this directly on their shelf, just make sure that you place some of these instruments on a tray or in a basket. And like I said, you're able to place these on either the second or first shelf. Um, I would recommend the first shelf if you have uh, a son or daughter who is younger than a toddler and you want to start introducing some of these instrument, instruments a little bit earlier, uh, then go ahead and introduce them onto the very bottom of the shelf. But um, if they're a little bit older, then, you know, go ahead and place them where you want because these are activities that both your son and your daughter are able to use regardless of age. Now let's move on to practical life activities. Now, because we are talking about having a limited amount of space, 
um, in case you aren't able to set up like a little play kitchen or um, just other activities that would take up a lot more space, then this is an activity that you may want to um, invest in. Let me go ahead and show you how easy it is to just set up a tray with one or two practical life activities. Now this I went ahead and set up on the very bottom of the shelf again so that it's accessible to my daughter. It's easy for her to remove the tray, especially since the things on the tray are a little bit heavier. I didn't want to place it any higher up just in case it was a little too heavy. So I placed it at the very bottom. It's easily accessible for my daughter and for my son. So this activity, I went ahead and set it on a tray. It's got two glass uh, glasses for them and it's also got this metal uh, pitcher and it's always filled with water and that way they are able to learn how to properly pour water from one cup to another. I also included a baster so that they're able to learn how to distribute water that way and they've also got a smaller one um, and this one is a little bit more challenging so I did include it in that, bas um, in that tray so that my son is able to utilize that one. But again, a very easy, simple activity, and I was able to place it on the bottom of the shelf. Now over here to the side, I have a few different uh, practical life puzzles. And I was able to just set this up since it comes in its own individual shelf. And it is small and compact, and it's got different activities for them to be able to learn how to dress themselves. So some of these puzzles, are uh, have the ones with the zippers. Some of them have safety pins. So again, it's very good for their hand and eye coordination and fine motor skills. Um, there's also some with buttons and there are belt buckles. Um, if you are not able to uh, get something like this because it's not in your budget, then perhaps something like this puzzle would be something that you would want to link, uh, that you would want to look into. So this is just a Melissa and Doug puzzle and it's got all of the little uh, practical life um, activities on here. So there's like a lacing one, a zipper one, button, buckles, and a smaller button over here. So this might be something that um, would fit better within your budget and within your space, and you could just place this on a shelf and it's easily accessible to both your son and your daughter. So if you don't wanna go the route of getting individual trays, um, and individual puzzles to help kind of develop all of these different skills, then the puzzle would be absolutely perfect for you. Okay, so now we are done to our very last category and that would be arts and crafts. Now, again, because we are talking about a limited amount of space, perhaps you don't have an area where you can just focus on having all of their art supplies and art activities. So uh, the next best thing is just giving them a small space on their shelf with perhaps just a few crayons, some markers, and some paper. You can place this on a tray for them, or you can place this you know, side by side like I have, and that way my son or daughter is able to utilize the markers or the crayons and the paper. So everything at least is in that particular shelf space, and my son and daughter can both access it. All of the art supplies I always have available for my son and daughter to use. And again, it is always easily accessible to them. And that is why I included it on the very bottom of our shelf space. So in relation to the art activities, again, since we are talking about having a limited space and perhaps having a few budget constraints, if we can't afford to purchase a whole separate like desk or table area for our son or daughter to be able to work on their art activities, or perhaps we just don't have the space to include a separate table, then this would be the perfect option. And it is just a small tray that you can fold up the legs and store away on the side of their shelf. And that way it's easily accessible for them to be able to take out, prop up, and bring their art activities over to this tray. So I actually have a couple of these in my living room and I just store them under uh, one of our bookshelves. And that way when my son or daughter wants to work on an art activity in the living room, then they can pull out just one of these trays instead of me having to get separate sets of furniture and have them you know, located all over the room. So this is the perfect option for you, again, if you have a limited amount of space and if you are also looking at uh, saving a bit of money. 
And that is it, you guys. It's really as simple as that. If you guys have any more questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I will be more than happy to answer them. If you enjoyed this video and it was informative, please make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We are so close to our very next goal, all thanks to you guys. And make sure to ring that notification bell so that you are notified of when I next post a video. Remember that I do post at least two videos every single week and at least one of those videos is always Montessori or Waldorf uh, based and inspired. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.